All right, I pulled out the back part of the meter, uh, which has the uh, connector here. Now, the cool thing about the connector and why it's built in, it's really hard to see, but there's a little lever down there. And when you plug in the cord, it pushes on that little lever. And that little lever pushes on the switch. And it automatically changes from AC input to DC input. So it's wired right now for the DC input, the batteries. But if you plug in the cord, then that switch goes over and connects it to AC and, and, and runs, this, uh, runs this transformer. So the only thing this module does is supply 5 volts on the output. Okay, either coming from the battery or coming from a five volt zener, um, that's what's coming out this out the out this connector right here. Uh, I'll show you that connector later, but it, it mates with the main board. But the only thing this module does is supply five volts, um, and so uh, I connected uh, power cord and looked at the output, and sure enough, it was five volts. And then I took a 500 ohm uh, resistor and loaded it down and it went down to 4 volts. So it's just not supplying any current at all. Um, and uh, I don't know if the uh, uh, transformer is weak or the uh, pass transistor. This is the pass transistor is weak. Um, I believe it's the transistor. Um, the capacitor seems okay, but I think the... Uh, I think this this transistor is bad. That's just my that's just my hint right now, or my, my thoughts right now. Um, so since this module only outputs five volts to the rest of the unit, the rest of the unit has DC DC to DC converters in it, and the DC to DC converters uh, create um, plus eleven, plus ten, minus seven, and minus twelve. Um, uh, but since it's battery powered, it all has to come from this one one voltage. So what I did was I uh, hooked up my Rigel uh, so, uh, uh, power supply uh, for five volts and ran it into the unit. It's drawing about 120 milliamps. Uh, oops, sorry about that. But let me lower you down here a bit. Uh, so this is uh, the output. I have it measuring, uh, uh, oops, oh, what am I doing here? I think everything's, yeah, I have it measuring voltage right now. So I'm going to step the voltage up to 9.46 and 9 point, it's not shielded or anything right now. It's kind of flapping in the breeze, but 9.46, I think it's working okay. Let's take it down to, uh, here's 3.315. So, I think the unit itself is operating perfect. Um, so, let me show you a couple things that I've discovered. I'm going to have to move the camera around. So, you can see over here, this little transformer. This is where the, uh, the DC to DC conversion is done in this area here. And uh, you can see that there's this big gold contacts here. Um, that that connector on that board that's on the back, it slides onto those two, uh, onto those two pads. And so it's basically like a homebrew edge connector. Um, it goes onto, onto these two pads. There's a little fuse right here, so it's double protected inside. Um, but let's turn it over because the contact's not being made on that side, it's being made on this side. And I think you can see that this one is super ugly. So the negative connector is just super ugly. All of the, all of the gold has been worn off of that, uh, off of that pad there. Uh, so the positive side looks nice and shiny, but this side is all mungled up. Um, but I don't think that's the main issue. Uh, it's definitely an issue, but I think it'll probably be okay. I'll maybe brighten it up a bit with... Uh, with a little bit of abrasive. Um, but, uh, yeah, the main problem is with this thing over here. Uh, so I think I'm going to measure again, I'm going to measure the input to the transistor and the output of that transistor and see if that transistor is just, just weak for some strange reason. All right, so I've got power. We're getting 5.188. Um, it says that the Zener diode is a 5.23. Uh, 
5.23 and then it gets dropped by a VBE drop. So we should be getting around, uh, let's see here, this is the plus minus, yeah, it should be a little bit lower than five volts, just a tiny bit lower than five volts. Uh, let's see here, I've lost my power just a second. Sorry about that. So here's my 500 ohm load. So we're gonna load it down with 500 ohms and it goes down to four volts. So let's see here. Five volts at 500 ohms is 10 milliamps. And the thing needs at least 100 milliamps to operate. So yeah, this power supply is just not supplying, supplying anything. So let me look at the input to that transistor. The input to that transistor is, let's see here. Where's the input? The input, that'll be a negative there. And this will be a positive here. Okay, so 15 volts. Am I looking in the right spot? I wanna make sure I am. Uh, yeah, so this is the, uh, there's a bridge rectifier right here. And then it goes to this uh, uh, capacitor here and uh, we get 15 volts in. Uh, and then if I load it down, I get 14.3 volts in, but the output dropped to four volts. So yeah, this, uh, this um, transistor is not up to snuff. So let's just go ahead and replace them and uh, go from there. I thought I'd give you a little bit better view of what's going on here. Uh, so the power comes in, it goes into the bridge rectifier. Here's the capacitor, that yellow capacitor right here, uh, 400 microfarads. And uh, I monitor this point right here at 14 volts, 15, 14 volts. And uh, this 5.32 reg volt regulator is on the base. And it's being biased with this R1, so the transistor is on. And there should be uh, uh, an emitter follower action here. So we should be getting uh, a diode drop voltage here. So it should be around 4.9, I don't know, something like that here, um, depending on, on uh, this transistor and stuff, but somewhere around five volts should be on the output. And so, yeah, this transistor here, Q1, uh, it's a big one on a heat sink. So maybe it just got hot and got weak and uh, for whatever reason. Yeah, so we're gonna replace him. All right, I pulled the uh, transistor out, so let's test him. And he says he's an NPN, he just must be sick. Um, so not always, you know, transistors can be fine at low current, I don't know. Anyway, this one is not operating right in my mind, but it's base collector emitter is one, two, three. And I have this transistor here that um, is base collector emitter as well. The HFE is much higher on this one, but I don't think that's gonna get us in trouble. It's just an emitter follower. And I think that these will be substitutes for, for each other just fine. If anybody really cares, this is a Motorola 652. I don't know, that's probably an HP. Uh, what is this one I'm replacing it with? This is a 2N, oh, I can't read it. 6121, 6121. My bin says that it is a uh, 45 volt, four amp. So that's uh, plenty. Yeah, let's put it back in. Uh, when I took the uh, board out, uh, little things fell out, so the voltage selector had these little spring contacts that went on to gold, gold pads on the board over here. So I've got, when I put it back together, I have to make sure I've got it all together. All right, the uh, transistor's back in. I'm monitoring the voltage out and we're getting 4.9, which makes sense, right? We have a 5.23 Zener and we're getting 4.9 out. Now let's load it down with 500 ohms and we get down to 4.5. So that's a lot better than the four that it was doing. Um, sort of want to load it a bit more, but I think 
I don't see anything else that could be wrong with this circuit. So I'm just going to pop it back in and uh, see if everything starts to work magically again. So uh, it seems to be working just fine. Uh, measuring a 500 ohm resistor. Let's uh, let's get something else to measure here. Yeah, I'll just get my resistor box and we'll just put it on here. Uh, 4.7K, 3.3K, 2K, 1K. Yeah, this thing works great. Uh, let's go up. Let's go to uh, 47K, change ranges, 46.7. Yeah, so it's working fine. Probably use calibration, uh, but I would say that it's working. Let's put in some voltages. Um, let's this is going to be in the way of the camera. I'll put them on this side. Okay. Uh, 3.315, 3.3, .3, fine. Uh, 3.315, oh, perfect. Yeah, so they agree, per they agree perfectly. Oh, nice. Uh, this is uh, 4.813. There, there you go. They're spot on. Both of them are spot on. Excellent. <laughs> anyway, so I brought the multimeter back to life. It's working good now. Uh, 3465A, uh, I might just take it back to the store and give it to the, <laughs> give it to the nice ladies there and say, here, I fixed your multimeter. You can sell it for more than $20 now. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's working good. I think, uh, next video we'll go through the calibration just to see if it needs it and, uh, and call it quits.